This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, for August 30, 2023, Cobb kills a gunman during an attempted robbery at Manchester Beach. A man was reportedly shot dead by an off-duty policeman at Port Casa Beach on the Port Casa Main Road in Alligator Pond, Manchester, during an alleged robbery attempt Tuesday afternoon. The man, who up to press time was still unidentified, was reportedly trying to rob the cop when he was shot. A firearm was reportedly seized from the deceased man. The Independent Commission of Investigations has launched a probe into the incident. Reports reaching the news indicate that around 2.30 p.m., a police corporal was at the beach when he was pounced on by the robber. It is reported that the man pulled a handgun, pointed it at the policeman, and demanded his bag. The demand was not met, and the gunman opened gunfire at the lawman, who took evasive action and returned the fire, hitting him. The man fell to the ground, and a Glock pistol was retrieved from him. He was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead, the police said. Two escape injuries after outpacing gunman in St. Mary attack. Two people, including a teen, narrowly escaped injuries when they were attacked and shot at by a gunman along the Airy Hill Main Road in Arakabesa, St. Mary, on Monday. The two, ages 37 and 18, both construction workers, proved too fast for the gunman who stopped upon realizing he was being outpaced. It was reported that around 5.40 p.m., the men were sitting in a car when they saw a masked man approaching them. They fled the vehicle, ran, and were chased by the gunman, who fired several shots at them. The gunman gave up the chase and ran back to a waiting vehicle which sped off. None of the men were injured, and a report was later made to the police and an investigation launched. Owner of stolen vehicle in shock after well-orchestrated robbery. In the wee hours of Sunday morning, nifty thieves made off with one of two vehicles parked in a yard, which the owner thought would be safe behind an automated security gate in the Cassia Park community in St. Andrew. The homeowner told the news on Tuesday that he was alerted by a neighbor about 4 a.m. that the sedan motor car was missing. He said the neighbor told him that two cars were parked at his gate let them live here, but at the same time, nothing untoward was suspected. They are professionals. It was a well-orchestrated plan. It's a team of people. They dismantled the arm of the remote gate to gain access to the premises, he said. The homeowner said the property also has cameras and a big floodlight, which also did nothing to deter the robbers, as they also skillfully tampered with the camera system. The thieves managed to steal the car by jimmying the lock. However, their attempt to steal the sports utility vehicle luckily did not work, as the security system installed did not allow it, so they weren't able to get it started. The homeowner said the thieves were very meticulous, and they didn't break a window or pivot glass. Everything was neatly done. He said the only evidence that anything was amiss was the key barrel that they dug out. I think they were trying to either sell the vehicle, sell parts or whatever, so they did not damage the vehicle per se. Even the things that they took out of the vehicle when they were trying to get it started, they carefully put them down in the vehicle. Either they are professional body men or professional electronics people, but they are professionals, he said. The homeowner said he strongly believes that they were canvassing the area and deliberately targeted his home despite the very visible security features. I guess they were driving around and they look at the stuff, they come around at night and see what is where, he said. The Cassia Park resident, who spent much of Sunday re-securing his property, said while he is grateful the police were able to retrieve the stolen vehicle, lamented that it still comes with a price as he has to fork out the high record fee from his own pocket. This is causing me two record fees which are not covered by insurance, $40,000 to move the stolen vehicle from the location where it was found to the police station, then to my house. The other one is to be taken down to the dealership, he said. The distraught homeowner is suggesting that the police do more patrols in the area to deter other would-be robbers. 
The police need to do more patrols and stuff like that. The police must be aware of what is happening in their area to control and to do patrols. Them can't sit down in their offices. They have to come out and just drive through the areas. If you know an area is having a problem, you need to do spot checks, patrols and all that, he said. This homeowner was not the only victim of these smooth operators, as over a two-week period, according to the operator of a wrecking service, he has been retrieving a number of vehicles that were stolen in the Cassia Park area. They are either stolen from Cassia Park or are being stolen from elsewhere and are taken to the community, he said. He said he has also noticed that the vehicles stolen are both a key and a button start, and that the robbers do not damage the door or break a glass, but leave them in pristine condition. BITU says workers could be adversely affected by BOJ governor's wage caution. The president of the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, Senator Kavan Gill, says employees could be adversely affected by the recent caution by Bank of Jamaica Governor Richard Biles against employers granting massive wage increases. Speaking with the news, Mr. Gill asserted that the governor's statement has swayed several private sector entities to be sparing with their wage offers. The report that we're getting is that, you know, negotiations were going fine until that statement came, which somehow changed the mood in terms of how some employers, and I'm not saying all, some employers would have approached the negotiations with some level of caution. And uh, yes, it would have set some sort of a damper on those negotiations. The companies are moving at a different pace and more cautiously now. Some taking guidance from the statement. We have encouraged those that we are negotiating with not to yield to that temptation. This too has sparked a kind of debate that is needed for the private sector and the labor force around the examination of reward and investment through productivity bargaining. So that may have been one of the positives that have come out of this. But when a statement of this nature is made, and we can understand why the governor is trying to protect the inflationary target. The economy ex ex experiencing growth, and these same companies in the private sector are announcing increased revenue and profitability. The workers are looking at a, a reasonable return on their investment. Trelawney man charged over machete attack. 48-year-old Errol Chaplin, a farmer of Stettin, Trelawney, was charged on Monday with assault occasioning actual bodily harm, following an incident in his community on Tuesday, August 15. The Falmouth police report that about 10.30 a.m., the complainant was at a barber shop in the area when an argument developed between him and the chaplain. It reportedly escalated and the accused subsequently used a machete to hit the complainant in his upper body. A report was made to the police and an investigation was launched. Chaplin turned himself into the police and was subsequently charged on Monday, August 28. His court date is being finalized. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.